It's time to talk about the newly released Google Pixel 6a versus its older brother, the Google Pixel 6. And this video is not going to be about which one is better. And the Pixel 6 is objectively better than the 6a. In fact, that's the entire point when they were designing the 6a. It was more an idea of what could we take from the Pixel 6, but also what could we cut from the Pixel 6 to put in the 6a that brings the price down to the point that they wanted to be at. The brief here today, what we're aiming to do is deciding the things that are still in the Pixel 6 that were left in, do they justify the increase in price between these two devices? And I say price because it's not static. Originally, when I was going to do this video, I was thinking it was $150. And while that's still the case on the Google website, Amazon, link will be in the description, not renewed, brand new, unlocked, you can get a Pixel 6 device for now $556 as opposed to the $599. So that brings that difference to just over $100. There are some things here, we'll talk about them, but here's the, the conclusion that you're going to draw and what I want people to know about these two devices. There's no wrong decision here. There's no wrong answer. If you pick up a Pixel 6, you're never going to have to feel bad about spending the extra money because there are things there that I do believe make it worth it. If you get a Pixel 6a, if you don't want to spend that money, if you want to spend 449 or less, you're never going to have to feel bad or feel like you cheaped out in any way because the core experience is here with the Pixel 6a. So there's no wrong decision. If you're able to do it and you pick up the Pixel 6 because you got a few extra bucks, you could feel good about that. And the same here, if you don't, if you're on a budget, if you were just looking to spend 449 or you don't care about the things we talk about that are still in the Pixel 6, you don't have to feel that bad about your purchase there either. It's not a traditional, well, this one is good, this one isn't. They're both good and they both serve the purpose for the price and for the consumer that they're going for. But I will tell you some things that I did notice. First thing is the display, and I'm not going to talk about 60 hertz, all right? I'm going to stop that right there. If you're about to comment about 60 hertz, just save us both the time and don't. I understand it's a, it's a luxury, it's a feature, it's something that if you really need, hey, get the Pixel 6. And on some apps, it absolutely makes a difference. But I will tell you this, if you turn off animations on these devices, you are not going to notice a difference just going through the system UI, just scrolling through, using menus, using whatever else, you're not going to notice that difference between the two, the 60 hertz and the 90 hertz when it comes to these two devices. Now, like I said, apps and games, you're absolutely going to notice it. Some scrolling, you're going to notice it. But for the most part, that is not the reason I would or wouldn't buy one of these devices. But there are some differences with the display. Just on the size alone, you can see the two devices. In fact, I'm going to turn the screens off so you can see that a little bit better in the light. But, you know, it doesn't seem like a large difference, but it is. This is heftier because of the build, which we'll talk about in a moment. Some people love the pocketability of the 6.1-inch display on the 6A, and that's fine. But there are some quality differences between these two panels that, like I said, have nothing to do with refresh rate. I did notice that the panel, or at least my OLED panel, on the Pixel 6 was slightly sharper, slightly better. Now, it's the same resolution. They're both 1080p displays. But I did notice the colors were a little bit better on the Pixel 6, at least my panel, than they were on the 6a. I don't want to say these were washed out because that's not the right word. That makes the, the 6a panel seem a heck of a lot worse than it actually is. This is crisp. This is nice. The colors are good on it. I'm just saying that the colors and the saturation to me and the overall image quality was a little bit better on the 6 than the 6a. So take that with a grain of salt. Take that for what it is. But I just, in my experience, noticed that I liked the display better on the Pixel 6. Wireless charge, I, you know, look, I like wireless charge. It's nice to have it, but it's a convenience. It's something that I don't even use that much anymore. I usually just plug my devices in because it's typically faster. And at the same time, I always thought, I don't know if that's a, a, a urban legend or something like that where, where it hurts the battery. I don't know if it does or not, but I just didn't get in the, in the habit of wirelessly charging my devices. And re reverse wireless charge, I, <laughs> I've used that one time. One time, when I first got it on my S10 Plus, and that was to show somebody that it had it, and I never used it again, because for the most part, it's slow, and it's not practical. So it, it's more of a, a, a check in a box. Well, I got it. Well, if you're in a desert somewhere, and you need to use your Google uh, AirPod, or whatever the heck they call it, Google Buds, yeah, okay, all right, you could charge them up for an extra 10%, or something like that, if you got an hour to spare. But for the most part, on day-to-day -day usage, it's not something that's going to get in the way, and it's certainly not a reason why you'd spend an extra 100 or 150 bucks on a six 
over a 6A build quality. Now, this is something that does come into play. It's very nice. Look, you got the glass on the back as well as the well, of course, on the front. You got the glass on the front of both of them, but you got the glass on the back. It's Victus glass. You got the aluminum frame, which you have on both, which is quite nice. You get the feel of the the metal frame, which I like. I, I when a lot of times the budget phones that cut on the frame and it makes it feel cheap. And I understand that we put cases on these devices anyway, but the frame makes the device feel cheap. Both of these feel nice and premium because of that. But you do get the glass, but there's extra weight that comes along with that. Despite the bigger display, in, a, in addition to the di bigger display, rather, there also is the better build material, the heavier build material of the glass that makes this display, uh, uh, makes the phone itself a little bit heavier. Overall, nice feel, though. You're going to love the glass, but is that something that you want to do? Because a lot of times, people put cases on them anyway, so whether you're feeling glass or plastic, it's not going to make the difference. But at the same time, I feel better about carrying the Pixel 6a without a case. And a lot of times, I, it's odd because we love the designs of these devices and we'd love to carry them caseless. But in the situation of a Google, uh, the Pixel 6, it being glass, I don't want to do that. I just feel nervous if I drop it that this is glass is going to break. But this, the 6a, I feel a little bit more confident going ahead and wearing it without a case because it's got the plastic. If I, I know it's not going to shatter if it hits the ground. Now... That being said, let's talk glass because, it, like I said, Victus on the front of the 6. You've got Gorilla Glass, I believe it's 3, on the front of the 6A. But that's okay for me because I've experienced this with my S22 Ultra. Victus and the newer ones scratch and they micro scratch. And it's annoying because you have to look at it every time you lock your phone. Sometimes when you're a bright light, you're going to see those scratches forever. And I guarantee the moment that you, your phone grazes near a jean button pocket or something like that that you have on your jeans those little stupid buttons going into the pocket it's going to scratch and you're going to get one that's particularly annoying to you and you're going to stare at it every time you lock and open your phone you know maybe that's just me i don't know but you know I, <laughs> that's just whereas the gorilla glass 3 and the older versions of gorilla glass uh, glass were more scratch resistant but they shattered more easily okay so put a case on it if you're that worried about it and don't have an issue with that. Don't drop your phone on a rock and you'll be okay. And it doesn't shatter. But you're not going to get those micro scratches that you get with the newer ones. But this one you could, I don't know, throw off a building. And it's not going to shatter because the glass is a little bit softer. That's okay. But at the same time, keep that in mind. Okay. Camera. Didn't notice that big of a difference between the two. Be perfectly honest. I understand this has the two 12 megapixel sensors. The old ones that they used to use. This one has the newer 50 megapixel sensor. It's still a lot on the back end. Uh, there, this does afford you more versatility and more data, basically more light that's coming in and more pixels that you have to work with in terms of an image. So if you are somebody that does heavier photograph stuff, if you are somebody that does stuff for work, stuff on Instagram, whatever it happens to be, then you're going to want the extra data that a 50 megapixel sensor provides. And you're not going to want to uh, rely as heavily on the computational photography for, for everybody else. Just the, I'm pulling out a picture because I got something at Starbucks. I'm at the mini golf course, so I'm going to head at where a family photo, family event. This is the point and shoot is going to be just fine on both of these, and certainly would not be why I would upgrade or spend extra money on the Google Pixel 6. Here's something that you might though: the RAM, six gigs here, eight gigs here on the Pixel 6. That's not so much of an issue now, as they're both running really well i'm not having an issue in fact when you get to android 13 then you're going to see some big improvements with that and how they run i wouldn't worry so much about that now but if you're keeping one of these devices two three years from now when you're on android 15 and it's hogging memory or something's going on or there's a bunch of new apps you know instagram now takes a gig of ram when it opens up or whatever it happens to be you're prepared over here with that extra two gigs of RAM. And what I've noticed over the past few years is one of the biggest things that even more so than process, I mean, I shouldn't say that. It, it, it's, a, it's a tandem, it's a marriage for sure. But one of the things that goes hand in hand with performance with the processing power on Android the past few years is how much RAM. If a device is under rammed that's where you're gonna get a significant portion of the lag. So future-proof, if you can afford it, it's good. Get the eight gigs. Support's gonna be the same. This expires, expires. It stops getting major Android updates in October of 2026. This goes to July of 2027. So that's more security patches. Now, Android, uh, whatever that's going to be, 17, 18, 
this will get more support deeper into the year than this will, but they're both going to be abandoned and left on the same version of Android, no matter which one that you choose in the future. Fingerprint sensor, I'll go over real quick. That's a software thing. It's a lot better on the Pixel 6, but that's because this is running the 13 beta. It was running the same as it was on the Android 12 when I had them both on 12. So I think on 13, they're going to fix a lot of the fingerprint sensor issues. I think the fingerprint sensor stuff, the unreliability is software based. And that's something that they've cleaned up significantly in Android 13. Overall, like I said, there's no wrong answer here. It comes down to if you can afford it, if it's in your budget, if those things that I mentioned matter to you, then go ahead and pick up a six and you will absolutely not feel like you're wasting any money. At the same time, conversely, if you're somebody who doesn't want to spend that extra money, if those features and things that we talked about don't really appeal to you and don't matter to you, you don't have to feel like you're cheaping out or feel bad about your purchase at $449. In fact, feel pretty good about it. This is an excellent, excellent, excellent device for the money. And in a sea of garbage, a lot of times when we talk about these Android devices at certain price points, especially sub $500, this is quite nice and one you can just pick up and use and it's going to perform well because they're both powered by the same tensor chip. They're both going to get a lot of the same features, if not all of the same features, when we get to future Android versions. So feel good about either one. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have a Steve-licious day.